Hi guys. It's a Saturday. Well, I can't remember if it's a Saturday morning or an afternoon. Hang on. Ooh, it's an afternoon. It's a bit later than I thought it was actually. Uh, I've got that open. Because <laughs> I've actually figured out what the problem is, or was, with uh, the right hand speaker jack wasn't a loose connection. Let's so use a big red capacitor in here. There should also be one there, but it's uh, kind of shrunk. I've got this <laughs> sort of jury rigged in here at the minute. Um, so I was going to shorten the wires, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to hot glue that on the side somewhere probably. And just tidy the wires up and blob some solder on there and on there and perhaps cover them up so they don't short or at least cover one up and uh, just tidy the wiring up but uh, the reason that was so 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 distorted on that right hand jack was a faulty cap the only reason I temporarily rigged it up like that is because uh, I haven't got a capacitor tester so I couldn't test the capacitor itself which I've misplaced so there it is it's over here so um, to test my theory I just soldered a couple of wires to that little capacitor which isn't an exact match for this this one's a 2000, 2000 microfarad one that one's a 2200 but uh, it works <laughs> that's the main thing it is actually working fine with that in there so that's what I've got to do I've just got to tidy that up so yeah that was the culprit I just had a feeling because there was one of these on each jack and I just suspected that if one is working fine and the other jack isn't then it stood highly likely that this was the problem so like I said I just rigged a couple of wires on there which I would have done anyway on that little cap and I uh, just connected them up there loosely and tried it and yeah Bob's your uncle works so that's a job for in a little while like I said I'm just gonna blob some solder on there and find something just to cover them up I'm guessing it's it's just for a filter or something that's what I'm guessing it's for it didn't work the first time because numpty nuts here put the bloody wires around the wrong way I thought I'd put them on the right way that'll teach me to use two of the same color wire really wouldn't it <laughs> I should have used two different never mind it didn't damage the cap I just took the wires off and uh, switched them around well, yeah, you might notice I've had a clean up in here as well especially over here I've got the CRT in here out of the way I've got that monitor in I've got that one to go in the kitchen when I've sorted out in there uh, put that up on Gumtree Mike Trout on eBay as well I think I put it up for a far too high a price. I think I was pushing my luck too much. So I'll drop the price later. I can't leave those lights on for a minute. Yeah. I'm going to need that bit of solder through there. Aren't I? I'm going to need my glue gun as well. I only want to glue the capacitor down because it's just going to stop it. Ow! That was sharp. That was a Lego brick. There's a surprise. Yeah, I don't want the capacitor just flopping around in there. No, I was going to heat shrink these connections as well, but then I thought, well, that one isn't. <laughs> so I thought, why bother? I just need to put something around that, really, just to um, protect it. And the only reason I'm going to dab some solder on it is just because that will make a stronger connection, especially on this one. 
Because you see that I can move that all around, that's just going to be a shitty connection otherwise. That might be a bit tricky to get in there without catching the uh, coax cable there. Still haven't figured out how old this is. And it's got that big old cap tuner down there, variable cap, I think that's what that's called. I think. <laughs> I actually can't remember that. It's got all this end-to-end uh, -end capacitors, not like your traditional modern one like that, where you've got the two contacts on the end. These ones are coming through each end. What the heck are all of these? Never seen those before. I don't actually think it was. it's as old as I thought, to be honest. Because I was thinking maybe 60s, early 70s, but going by this and the fuse holders and whatnot, I'd have said this is probably mid to late 70s. But I'm guessing. So it could be, you know, totally 100% wrong. <laughs> None. Mm, I was just hoping laboratory balanced motor oh. that's a shame I was actually hoping there was some sort of date code on it to give us a clue well it's like 679 written on that transform I don't know 679 maybe possibly we've got some sort of fluff <laughs> forming on here I might get my brush and just brush all that off. I've got a little one inch brush. Yes, so this, I'll just, you know, put some hot snot on it and just glue it to the side somewhere out of the way. Then I can just tuck these wires in. Perhaps put some tape around them just to tidy them up a little bit. Blue gun. Blue gun's in the bottom of that toolbox. Ooh, we chucked a lot of crap out here yesterday as well. Them drawers are going to come out of there eventually because we're going to put shelves in there. Using the two smaller boards that are buried under there. My record collection is getting bigger. Look at this. I've got a bunch from the Recycle Centre Monday. I'm going to rescue a few out of the boxes that are in the workshop at Mum's. A few 45s there. What's this one? I think that's a 78, that one. Let's have a party. Yes, 78. That's the only 78 I've got. Because I do believe that the LPs are all 33s. And that does all three speeds. Yay! I think my old Fergie up the corner is just a uh, two speed. It's actually a nice looking record player. Right. I don't know what I can do. I might as well plug in the solder now and get it heating up. Get my lamp here heated up as well. Because that lamp is. Uh, Compact fluorescence, so it's got to heat up. Alright, I'll put the soldering iron in, I'll get that sorted out first. I've got two wires and two different lengths. Go me. I may make them both the same length. Yeah. I just want to blob some solder on that. 
should be able to get in there with a the soldering iron. Give that a little while to heat up. Like I said, it's only got to secure the connections. It's not professional repair, but it'll do. It'll get it working. Well, it's already tested. It does work. <laughs> I'm going to have a speaker on two separate jacks instead of two on one jack. Alright, I'm going to turn the camera off then while and uh, just wait for that to heat up. I've got the lurg, I think. And uh, I'll report back later today. Alright, well, I'm back. It's dark. It's actually just gone 8 o'clock. Nemo wants feeding and I want a bath. <laughs> but I thought I'll just do this bit of video first. Um, put a new cap in the um, stereo, left it playing a record, and it got halfway through the second song and I heard a bang from in here. The cap had actually exploded inside the stereo. But get this. For the shits and giggles, I just loosely reattached the original capacitor that I took out, wrapped the wire around the terminals, and it worked. <laughs> there was no crackling or distortion or anything, it worked. So I just stuck that back in and dabbed a bit of solder on the wires to hold them in place. You know, good connection, and uh, it was playing fine earlier. It's definitely not the best cap in the world, but I don't seem to have a suitable replacement and the capacitor I put in there um, well I actually changed it that little golden black one got really 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 hot I could actually smell it so I took that out and put a bigger one in a 25 volt one in bearing in mind that the original was an 18 volt rated one so I put that in which was a 3000 and some odd microfarad capacitor. It's one of these, that's why I stuck in there, the second one. That actually just got so hot it exploded, basically. But, uh, it's now at the corner, all back together with the original capacitor in it. Yeah, that's the. Uh, <laughs> see if I can just get into a better light. <laughs> it go <gone> bang. <laughs> Boy, do these stink. So, uh, yeah, I know what these smell like now when they go bang. But at the moment, it's working. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it for now. Uh, well, let me just feed Nemo as well. I'm going to throw this capacitor in the bin. The only reason I kept it is because I want to show you guys. And that can go in there. I'm just going to see for now. I'll just throw some grub in Sir's dish. No, I'm not. I've got to get a fresh tin. Yeah, I'm coming, I'm a cannon. Well, Mum didn't phone today. She said she might phone during the day or this evening, so I'm going to presume she's going to phone later. And organise tomorrow. Right. Oh, I forgot to mention. Yesterday I had to sort out of all these brackets. I'm just going to take all the bolt, um, nuts and bolts off of these and uh, bin the rest because that really isn't worth keeping. So, I had so many of them. I've kept a handful of each in that bag down there, but the rest can all just be chucked out. So, 
it's working for now. <laughs> I'll probably turn it on later and it won't work. I'll have a distorted speaker. Um, oops. I've got my uh, front wheel from my hybrid bike up here. It's going down slowly. Uh, so obviously it only went down as fast as it did because there was my weight leaning on it. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> Got the rail or the first section of railway line in. Well, experimental railway line. Wind's picking up. <laughs> uh, I just want to build up a pillar. I think I'm just going to stick to that design. You know, the sort of concrete support design. Unless I get fancy, because now I've got the height worked out. I could actually get fancy with some arches. Which I might do, actually. I've got some arches. Here I go again, look, talking about Lego on this channel. I can't avoid it, can I? <laughs> Somewhere in here I've got arches, doors, aeroplane fins, aeroplane fins, empty drawer, empty drawer. Oh, I've got four empty drawers there. Ah, here we are. So I've got bunches of these I could stick in there. I could order some more of these, you know, and go all the way along like that. Perhaps two in between a section or something. That would um, add a bit more of an architectural look to it, wouldn't it? Other than just stand box standard pillars like that. Because to me that just looks too too industrial, and I don't want that look. <sighs> I've just been arguing with someone on Facebook. Two of us have actually two on one. Although one of them has stopped, and he's probably at work as he works nights as a security guard. Um, basically, at Chroma, you've got the pier, and of course people like to fish off the end of the pier. And right at the end of the pier is the lifeboat house. And uh, apparently boat, the lifeboatmen have been finding um, fishing line and weights and hooks and things all washed up on the slipway. Um, now obviously the fishermen on the pier are getting the blame for that, but I tried to point out that it may not actually be the fishermen, you know, because this type the tide as it goes in and out and obviously the sea currents undercurrents and overcurrents and all the other currents you get are quite a magical thing and they do move things around such as fucking great big whales that has has uh, washed up north of here on the coast on the east coast <laughs> north on the east coast <laughs> yeah um, if you travel around Norfolk that way in a northerly direction you will um, get to where the whale has been washed up. So my point is, if the sea can wash, you know, a several ton whale up just like that, it really isn't going to be affected by a couple of little lead weights and fishing hook and fishing line, is it? So that could have even come from further up the beach, you don't know. Besides, unless the fishermen are like able to cast round a 90 degree corner I very much doubt they're going to um, hit the ramp accidentally or purposely so it, one way or another it's washing up on the slipway but this guy's adamant that it's the fisherman's fault you know and that people shouldn't put the um, boatman's life in danger I don't actually know how it's putting anyone in danger. You know, it's fishing line. I don't think a several ton boat is a match for fishing line. It's just going to cut straight through it, even if it is on the ramp, but... <laughs> well, I suppose getting it in would be a problem, because they do have to jump off and sort of guide the boat in and up the ramp. But, uh... You can't prove it's coming directly from the fisherman on the pier, and that's my point. With the, how the sea... You know, the sea activity with the tides going in 
and then going out and in and out, you know, twice a day, I think. I think it's twice a day. It could easily, you know, wash fishing line out from the beach, wash it back up, then you've got the currents that's going to move up and down the beach. So, you know, like I said, it could have come from a good couple of miles up the beach, from someone who's angling off the beach. So we do get a lot of sea anglers around here, um, especially off of Trimmingham, which is just off the road, just off the road, just up the road from here. It's about five miles away. In fact, that's where my neighbour likes to go. So it could even be some of his that washes up on there. You don't know. But no, apparently it's all of the fishermen's fault on the uh, who fish off the pier. So I'm just going to give up now. I've got some notifications on Facebook now, and I bet one's probably from that thread. Oh no, it's the security guard. What's he said? <laughs> I'm not going to give you his name. <laughs> I mean, I've actually got the security guard. He's a friend on my Facebook. Um. Oh no, he's not working tonight. Family night, playtime. Cheap game system, but lots of fun and lots of exercise. I'm crying with what my kids are coming up out with. <laughs> oh well, it doesn't matter if it's a cheap game thingy or not. It's probably one of them plug-in game things, you know. With like 20 preloaded games, classic games. And they are just literally, you know, a cheap <laughs> plug in game thing. I did, I used to have one years ago. Got it from down the recycling centre. No idea what it ha what happened to it. I bet I got thrown out or something. left it at mum's I think and uh, she probably threw it out if I know her <laughs> <sighs> why do Facebook have to have the auto repeat feature on their videos that's the most friggin annoying feature they ever introduced I think This is a ship shipping ship shipping shipping ships. Try to sign up and you've had a few drinks. This is a ship shipping ship shipping shipping ships. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. That's one way to confuse you as well. <laughs> that Volkswagen. Oh, it's a Lego Volkswagen. Well, that explains the weird square look. Well, they did a good job on that, actually. I've got someone's live stream up on YouTube, and that really is lagging my internet for some reason. Or lagging my browser, I think. So, I bet if I shut down the um, YouTube tab my browser will behave itself I've actually noticed lately that I haven't had um, a shockwave error come up which was at one point a regular thing for Firefox uh, not a shock is it a shock Script has stopped working on this page. Piss off. That's an annoying error because it freezes your bloody browser. And sometimes, on a rare occasion, but it has happened to me, it won't unfreeze and you'll end up having to shut down your browser and restart it. And that's if it wants to shut down. 
and that's not a Windows 10 issue because I used to do it on Windows 7 as well so it's just a, a browser issue Oh, it's a bit of bloody car. Really, how in hell that was? So I was just reading crap on Facebook. Mm -hmm. oh. Right. I'll shut this video down, I think. Chances of me doing anything interesting now is slim. Don't know what Nemo's up to. Sounds like he's in his tray, actually. Yeah, it's lagging my browser. Oh, not anymore because he's actually ended the stream. Okay. Yeah. I can't remember if itchy left hand is meant to be that you're coming into money or spending money. I think it's got you got money coming in. I did have an itchy right hand earlier, now I've got an itchy left. I think that's how the old wife's tale goes. So I've got both that. I've actually lowered the price a little bit on the um, record player and the rally mountain bike I put up. I sort of bit the dust. I need a bit of room in the shed. And it's a nice bike, but I don't like it enough. In fact, I actually like the ride on that sort of no-name brand bike I decided to restore. So, <laughs> I'm going to keep that one. What the hell was I doing? Emails, that's what I was doing. Uh, no nothing in the spam folder, so no replies. From the ads. Although someone in town did offer me 20 quid and their bike for the bike I've put up for sale but I'm not keen on that because uh, I know what bike it is and that would be a bitch to shift um, well, it was one of mine to begin with that he bought off me for 20 quid but uh, like I said uh, <laughs> I don't think it would be an easy one to shift so I'm not keen on that deal and I'm not letting the mountain bike that I'm selling go for any less than 30. So, if he was to say deal or no deal, it would be a no deal. If it was something I could shift, or if I needed parts, it would have been a deal, because I could have still, you know, used a piece of shit for parts. But, uh, I don't need parts. I haven't got the room to keep bikes sort of, uh, you know, stored away, so, unfortunately, it's a no deal. <laughs> Ordinarily, if I had more room in the shed, I'd have just said, yeah, go on then anyway, because I'd have done something with the bloody bike. Right, boss is fed. I need to take a pee. And get out of these clothes, because it actually smells like the... Um, cooking oil rather and he said deep fat oil I don't have a deep fat fryer I haven't had one for years refuse to have one because my eating habits are bad enough without me returning 
to the eating habit of frying everything in sight. Yes, I did used to do that. Many, many years ago, sausages, fish fingers, burgers, anything like that, and the chips all just got fried in the deep fat fryer. <laughs> Until uh, one day it needed a clean out because the oil, when it cooled, was actually just turning into a thick sludge. And I just thought to myself, I'm not cleaning it out. I just picked it up, took it downstairs to the, the um, block of flats bin area and just hurled it straight into the bin. <laughs> and I've not had one since. And I'm going back well over ten years. And I've refused to have one since. I've got to um, a sandwich toaster, but I only got that because I used to love eating cheese toasties. But now my body has said, no, you're not having lactose. And that's that out of the question, unless I can find some lacto-free cheese. But in this town, we don't get much selection like that. Seriously, I can only get lacto-free milk from Sainsbury's and that's only one variety <laughs> that's semi skimmed they don't do um, skimmed or full fat as we call it they just do the one in the middle and I know the company that um, that they stock Arla makes you know all of the three skimmed <laughs> or whatever you want to call them so that is annoying. That's one reason I don't like Sainsbury's, because you just haven't got the friggin' selection there. And if you've got special dietary needs, that store is absolutely friggin' hopeless. I've actually been tempted to cycle across town to go to Waitrose and to see if their selection is any better. Lidl's isn't that good either. They only, you know, stock your normal cow's juice that's what mum calls it cow juice she always has done <laughs> and when she's out of milk she says the cows run dry <clears throat> oh. now, I know you can get lacto free lots of things but not in this town that's the one drawback with this town we might have three supermarkets but we don't have a good selection between them <laughs> you know, Lidl's do mostly their own stuff, apart from a few leading brands such as Pepsi Max and Coca Cola that you can actually um, get for 99p for a two litre bottle, cheaper than anywhere else in town. Uh, what was it, Mum called them a loss leader or something? You know, they make a loss on that to attract in the customers and rely on customers to go around buying all the other cheaper products and I guess that's how they recoup what they lose on selling Pepsi Max and whatnot. Because it's the same with Heinz salad cream and ketchup. Cheaper in Lidl's than anywhere else. <clears throat> Either that or they're selling it at a price where they break even on it. You know, so they're not making a profit or a loss. <clears throat> Just to attract in the customers. Yeah, I could go into a discussion about Lidl. It's not everyone's favourite store. But uh, I do like it. I did do some um, half decent stuff in there. Although I did get some chicken drumsticks from there once. No, not drumsticks. Dippers. And it was more breadcrumb than chicken. <laughs> it was literally about that thick. <laughs> it still tasted good enough to eat, you know, it tasted edible. But that just it was so thin. <laughs> but then again, I guess because it was cheap, that's what you get. <laughs> That'll be why it was cheap. Right, I'm gonna shut the camera down before I ramble on too much. And get a video up, I think. I haven't done for most of the week. Should be off to Mum's tomorrow, and if I charge some batteries up, I might take you with me, so I'll show you what my stepdad's been up to. 
Well, I haven't told you what he's been up to. He's found another... I was going to say little project, but it's not exactly little. <laughs> I'll show you tomorrow if I remember to charge these batteries. In fact, I think I've got a set charged. I keep forgetting, so I have to keep checking them on my mirror. Anyway, I'll talk to you tomorrow at some point. Bye. I'm doing that stupid wave again, aren't I? I don't know why I do that. Bye.